Welcome to our basic nunchuck class. So we're going to go ahead and start off in our middle grip. So our middle grip is basically just our fist right in the center of the chuck. So if you notice, there's about enough room for three hands lengths on these chucks. The first one, that, the one that we're going to be using the most is going to be our middle grip, which is going to be right in the middle. Makes sense, right? So we got middle grip. We've got our short grip or our high grip, which is grabbing close to the string. And then we have our low grip or a long grip, which is grabbing all the way at the tail end or the butt of the nunchuck. Again, most of the stuff we do is going to be done right here from our center grip. So the first thing we're going to learn is we're going to do our simple up. So our simple up is just like this. I have the nunchuck right here by my side. I raise it up and I catch it with my other hand. My other hand is going to be right here, about right behind my tricep. And I'm just going to catch just like this. This is my simple up. It's just raising it up here. One of the problems a lot of people tend to have is they bring their nunchuck over their shoulder. So if you notice, this is over my shoulder. I'm not going to be able to catch the nunchuck like this. I bring it off to the side of my shoulder when I do this. That's going to be how I'm able to catch the nunchuck. If I go over my shoulder, it's going to end up hitting my lats. It's going to hit my back. I'm not going to be able to catch it. I put it right off to the side. And I stick my hand right here. So I want you to just practice this along with me. It's just lifting up, grabbing it, and we're going to drop it right back down to our side. Up, grab. And we're trying to grab also in a middle grip. Later on, you'll be practicing grabbing in our long grip, or you can practice all the way up into our high grip. But I want you to focus right now on just getting that middle grip. Bring it down and up. And just catch it. That's all we're doing right now. We're just catching the chuck. So I just bring my elbow, or bring my hand up, bending right at my elbow, and putting it right there. I want you to go ahead and bring your other hand away from it. Try not to just keep it here and do this. We want to practice finding that spot. So our other hand kind of it can drop back down. Later on, we're going to keep our hands right here if it's not being used in the center. Because if you're swinging the nunchucks around and your hand's down here, it's going to get hit. You're going to end up hitting yourself, and it's not a pleasant thing. So just bringing it up and catching it, just like this. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do it on the other side. So I just switched hands and I raise it up. Again, I'm not going over my shoulder where it hits my back and I'm never going to be able to catch it. I'd have to do something else if I did that. I'm bringing it right next to my shoulder, but not over it. I'm bringing my other hand off to the side and I'm practicing going right to where I know it's going to be at. It's going to take quite a few times for you to realize where your hand needs to go and for it to be instinctive to just go right to that spot each time. But after practice, you'll be able to get it. Again, this is called our simple up because it's just simply going up. Remember, anytime we do stuff with our nunchucks, we always want to be able to do it with both of our hands because nunchucks you really need to be kind of ambidextrous with. If you only practice on your right side, you're only ever going to hold it with your right hand, and that's going to limit your ability to do a lot of combinations and a lot of different things. So we always want to practice it equally, if not more, on our bad side. So if you're right hand dominant, you should really be doing it more times on your left side so that they'll be about equal. Next thing we're going to do is what's called a front switch. So I did my simple up, and now it's basically me just dropping it down and doing a simple up. Dropping it down and doing a simple up. Of course, I want to do this with keeping the momentum of the chuck. So I don't want to just drop it, let it dangle a little bit, and then go up. I want to come all the way from one side to the other. It's called a front switch because I'm switching to the front. Later on, you'll be doing stuff like this where you're going back switch. But right now, we're just going to do our front switch. Remember each time it goes off to the side of the shoulder, never directly over it.
And if you don't catch it every time, don't worry. You might see me miss a few times. No matter how much you practice, there's always you're always going to make mistakes. So if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. There's been countless number of times where I've gone up and it's gone here and then it's just clicked right into my fingers. Things like that, they happen. You can't let it discourage you though. You just got to keep going. Again, this technique is called our front switch. So just keep switching along with me. When you feel like you can, you can start picking up the speed a little bit. If you're not quite there yet, just go whatever the pace you need to in order to be able to catch the nunchuck. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do what's called a side swing. So it's exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to swing to the side and I'm going to catch it underneath my arm. So I raise it up, I swing one circle to the side and then a semicircle underneath my shoulder. So I can do simple up, one, so I do one full circle and then the second one, it comes in. As it comes in, what I do, I have my first spin here and then I point the tip of the chuck I'm holding down and in towards my armpit. When it's right in here, I'm going to pinch or chicken wing it right here. When I do this though, I want to catch it in the center and right in basically a middle grip with my armpit. I don't want to catch it too high here. And I also don't want to catch it way back in here where I'm barely holding it. I raise it up, I swing, and I put it right in. When you do your side swing, I want you to try to keep for the first circle Keep the chuck that you're holding pointed directly up and then you can point it down. So I side swing and down. It's pointed up and then it goes down. Point up and then for that last semicircle, it goes right in. I point it right into my armpit and I chicken wing it, I catch it. This is called our side swing. Swing and under. We want to try to be able to catch it so that this is a right angle. This is pointed straight up. This is pointed or this is horizontal with the ground. That's going to be the ideal goal for this. It's just like this. Pointed straight up, horizontal, and I have that right angle right here. Now let's go ahead, simple up, front switch, and we're going to do the same thing onto the other side. Side swing and capture it. Side swing, capture. Remember, for that first circle, it's pointed up, and then I point the tip in towards my armpit. Again, the goal is going to be trying to have this perpendicular with the ground and this horizontal with the ground, having our right angle right here. Simple up and side swing side swing. Just like this. Keep practicing along with me. And as we lift this up, I still want you practicing catching that. That way we still get practice with our simple up. And that also helps with our front switches. Just be able to catch that. Our hand goes back to the center each time. And it goes, catches it, and back to the center. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go simple up, front switch, side swing, and capture. Simple up, front switch, side swing, and capture. Simple up, front switch, side swing, capture. Up, switch, swing, catch. Up, switch, swing, catch. I want you doing this right along with me. Simple up, front switch, side swing, and catch.
front switch, side swing, and catch. Raise it up, switch it, swing it around, and catch it under the arm. Up, switch, side swing, catch. Keep practicing along with me. As you start to feel a little bit more comfortable, you can go ahead and pick up the pace. If you're not quite there yet, don't worry about it. If this is your first time really handling nunchucks, then you're not going to be able to do it very fast at all. Don't worry about it. It's all going to come in time. You're going to be faster and faster as you practice more and more. Simple up. Front switch. Side swing. Capture. Goal is to be able to do it as fast as you can. If we're not there yet, keep going. The key to doing nunchucks is just to keep doing nunchucks. That's really it. All you have to do is be persistent. Don't give up. The more you practice, the better you're going to get. That's how everything is. The more we practice, the better we're going to get. If we decide this is too difficult and we give up, well, we're never going to get any good at it. We're going to have to push ourselves when you start to feel a little bit more comfortable. Go ahead and push yourselves. Try to pick up this pace just a little bit. Sometimes you'll notice I kind of cheat. And if I know my next move is going to bring it right back down after I do my front switch, I don't catch it. I kind of just pop it. That's something that I end up doing. I don't want you guys doing that yet. But if you see me doing that, it's just something that I've, I've come to start doing. Right now, I want you still catching it each time. That way you get used to that catch. Later on, you might do the same thing as me where you just kind of pop it out because you know what the next movement's going to be and it kind of saves time. It speeds up the movement and that's fine later on. But for now, let's just keep practicing catching it each time. Now let's go ahead and put it back into our dominant side. We're going to hold it and we're going to drop it down right here in front of us. What we're going to do is called an inward figure eight. So first let me explain the difference between inward and outward. So inward is judged or inward and outward are judged by the top of a circle. So if I say I'm making a circle here, this is just a circle. This isn't a figure eight. But if you look at it, the top half of the circle. So I'm completely ignoring this bottom half here, but the top half is coming in towards me. Ignore the bottom half. Top half is coming in towards me. So that means this is an inward, this is an inward circle. This is an inward figure eight is when I go circle from the inside, outside. So if the top of the circle is coming in towards me, that means this is an inward. If the top of the circle is going out, so it starts at me and then goes out away from me, that's an outward. So this would be an outward figure eight because if you notice, the top part of the circle is going out away from me. This is going to be inward. The top part of the circle is going in towards me. So that's how we're going to be determining whether something is inwards or outwards. The next concept I want to go over is going to be inside versus outside. So not inward or outward, but inside and outside. So for this, I want you to go ahead and just stick your, both your arms out right here. This space in between both of our arms, this is the inside. The space on the outside of my arm right here, this is the outside, and this is the outside. So if I'm holding it with my right hand right here, and it's spinning, this is the inside. So this would be inward because the top part of the circle is coming in to me, but it's also on the inside because it is in between my arms, this is the inside. So now if I move to the other side, this is still inward because the top part of the circle is coming in towards me, but it's on the outside of my arm. So if I switch arms, this is still the outside. 
because if both my arms are out here, it's on the outside of my arm. It's still inward, but it's on the outside. This is the, in this is the inside, and this is the outside. So I want you to be able to have a good grasp of that. Um, so if I ever say an outward figure eight, we're moving outward. Figure eight moves from the inside to the outside. But say I might say to do a outside strike or do something on the outside. I want you to know the difference between the outside, the inside, and inward versus outward. So that's just a few concepts with this. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start working on our inward figure eight. So with our inward figure eight, we're going to bring it to the inside and to the outside, to the inside and to the outside. We're going to try to keep this a small circle. So you might see some people on YouTube, they do stuff like this where it's real big and that's fine. This is still an inward figure eight. But for what we do, we want small circles, just like this. So most of it's going to be using our wrist, moving side to side. As I do this, I have a small push. So I push with my thumb. So if I have my hand just like this, I'm holding the chuck. I push with my thumb that way, and I push with my knuckle right here of my index finger, and I push that way. This is what gives us our figure eight, is I'm pushing. But I have a little bit of a turn with my wrist. I'm pushing this knuckle that direction and this knuckle that direction as I do this. That's what allows me to be able to turn the chuck as I do it. So that would be for outward, but it's the same thing opposite for inward. Just like this. So we're going to start off hanging it here, circle to the inside. Circle to the outside, circle to the inside, circle to the outside, inside, outside, in, out, in, out. When you start feeling more comfortable, you can pick up a little bit of speed. Just like this. Remember, it's inward because that top part of that circle is coming in towards me. It starts away from me, and it comes inwards towards me. Keep going just like this. Now watch what we're going to do. In order to be able to raise it up, as it's coming from the outside, it's going to come back in towards the inside. From the inside, I want to keep that momentum. So it went outside, and it comes in towards the inside right here. I keep this momentum, and I raise up for a simple up. So I'm here, up. So as it just came to the inside, I raise it up. It just came to the inside, and I raise it up for my simple up. So I'm doing my figure eight. I can go as fast as I want with this. And then as it comes in, boom, I raise it up. It comes inside and I'm able to raise it up. You can do it from the outside, but the difficulty is, as it's coming this way, it wants to come in this way. So if I raise this up, look where it's going. Obviously, later on, we're going to have enough control that we'll be able to change it while it's in the air, and it's not going to be a big deal. But at first, it's going to just be a lot safer if you go from the inside and raise it up. If you go from the outside and raise it up, you run that risk of it running this way and clipping you in the head, and we don't want that. So we come inside and raise it up. Inward figure eight, do a few. As it comes inside, I raise it up. Do a few. Inside, raise it up. Now look where I have it right here. I have my left hand in my middle grip, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. So we'll start off slow. So now that we're switching hands, we're going to do it inside circle, outside circle. You can start off a little bit bigger until you start feeling a little bit more comfortable with it. Later on, we're going to have very little wrist movement or very little movement in our entire arms as we're doing this. We're going to have it real close in here. But practice it as slow as you need to and as big as you need to. If you need to do it real big in order to understand the concept of it, that's fine. Don't worry about that. Like I said, 
We'll progress in time. The more we do it, the better we're going to get. And here. Let's keep going a little bit longer. Doing our inward figure eight. Again, it's called inward because that top half of the circle is coming from the outside to the inside, or out away from me, in towards me. Now remember, as it comes in, that's when I swing around to lift it up. So I go a few times, and then it goes inside, and I lift it up. Remember, this is my inside. It comes inside and up. If you'd like to try it from the outside, you got to be careful because it might want to come off to the side. Bring it inside and raise up. Inside and raise up. Just like this. When you start feeling a little bit more comfortable, go ahead and pick up the speed some. And every now and then, just throw a random simple up in there. Practice it. Whenever you feel it, you might be like, oh, I can do it that time, and then you're, it's too late. You didn't realize it in time, and you got to keep spinning it a few more times, and then you realize it, and go. So just every now and then, throw a simple up in there. Spin it, inward figure eight, simple up. Spinning, simple up. Simple up. Simple up. Now, I'm here. I'm going to go to the other side. A few inward figure eights. And whenever I realize, hey, I can do a simple up, now I do my simple up. I go to the other side and simple up. So this is how we can switch for our inward figure eight. I just do a simple up and I release it and I go to the other side. Whenever I'm ready, I pick it up. So I want you to practice just switching arms. Go as slow as you need to, and whenever you realize that you can lift it up, lift it up. And lift up. A few times and lift up. What I like to do is I like to count the sounds. And what I mean by the sounds is whenever you're nunchuck, whether you have a chain or a string, you can definitely hear it for a string. Chains make a lot more noises, so it's a little bit more difficult. But what we've got is we have where the string passes the nunchuck, just like this. So when I come inwards towards it, if you notice right here, my string is touching the top of my nunchuck, and then it slides past to come underneath. And I can hear these sounds. You might not be able to hear it but I'm able to hear every time. And I like to count them. So I like to do usually four of those sounds for my inward figure eight. I go one, two, three, four, and I lift up. One, two, three, four, and lift up. One, two, three, four, up. One, two, three, four, up. Those sounds are usually my indicators. So I do two each time. I do them in sequences of two. So whether I want to do one, two, and up, one, two, four, and up. One, two, three, four, five, six, and up. If I do one, two, three, then I'm going to be catching it on the inside. So that's why I do even numbers. But I like to count those sounds. Each time I do them, I go one, two, three, four, and I'm up. One, two, three, four, and I'm up. So that's one way that you can kind of know how many you're doing and try to make it even between each side when we're doing this. But this is going to be a good drill is to be able to just switch. Do a few on this side and switch. A few on this side and switch. A few on this side and switch. It's a great way that we can practice our inward figure eight. 
So I want you to take all these techniques and these little drills that we've just done, and I want you to practice them over and over again until you feel a lot more confident and you can pick up the speed as we're doing this.